Hello everyone, Dr. Data Science here to teach you data science methods and tools today, tomorrow, and beyond. In this video, we talk about a very important topic in machine learning, which is hyperparameter tuning. The first question is, what is a hyperparameter? A hyperparameter is a parameter that we have to adjust or set before starting the learning or training process. For example, let's say you want to train a neural network model, but first you have to decide the number of hidden, la hidden layers that you want to use. So that's one important hyperparameter. Another hyperparameter is the number of neurons per hidden layer. And we have examples like this in machine learning. For example, for polynomial regression, which we use as a case study today, we have the degree of polynomial function. So that's one important hyperparameter that we have to adjust before learning weights or coefficients in the regression model. And here in this video, we show that how you can combine pipeline and grid search CV to have a very efficient way of hyperparameter tuning for complex models that consist of multiple pre-processing techniques. If you like this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Okay, so to start, let's uh, begin by understanding pipeline in scikit-learn, or SKLearn for short, which is a very important machine learning and data science library. So the idea behind pipeline is to apply a list of transformers sequentially, or pre-processing techniques, and then apply a final estimator. And for now, estimator is simply a classifier or regressor. So we have one estimator at the end, and then we have these pre-processing techniques that we can use here. For example, these things can be a standard scalar, which can be used to remove mean and make sure that the variance is one. We can use maximum absolute value uh, pre-processing technique to make sure that uh, all features um, are between some um, predefined values or in, for example, other areas such as natural language processing, we have more complex um, transformers or pre-processing technique. Here, for simplicity, we focus on polynomial regression, where the idea is that if, let's say, we have one input feature X, we are going to use um, some degree here we choose degree equals two to find all combinations of these input features up to this degree and then we apply a regression problem here which is a regression method which is rate regression and rate regression also has an important parameter that we have to set which is the regularization parameter meaning that the strength of regularization that we want to use to trade off between optimizing uh, the uh, loss function, which is the mean squared error and additional term um, that puts weight on the norm or length of weight and coefficient in your model. So at the end, as you can see, this pipeline is very useful when you want to have nested or composite functions. And as I said before, you can have multiple of these uh, transformers or uh, pre-processing techniques. So now let's move on to the second topic here, which is great grid search CV in scikit-learn. So what's the purpose of grid search CV? We can use it to perform exhaustive search or comprehensive search over a specified parameter values to find the best set of parameters. So let's say here we have two hyperparameters in the example that we saw. One is the degree of polynomial, and then the other one is amount of regularization, which I will show you in the next slide when we get to the code example. And let's say um, hyperparameter one can take on four different values, hyperparameter two can take four values. So this means that we will have 16 total cases, right? Like here you can see A1 and B1, a1 and B2, A1, B3, A1, B4, 
and then similarly now A2, B1, and B2, and, and so on. So there will be a total of 16 cases. So grid search CV, what it does is that considers all these possible combinations and then performs cross-validation, meaning that divides the data into different folds and use one fold as testing and the rest of them for training and repeat this process until we test every fold or partition of data. So now in the next slide, we are going to look at one example and we have all the code here. So the nice thing about this video is that we have uh, presentation, text, code, math, everything together. So we we'll start by importing NumPy as NP, Pandas as PD. Pandas is used for uh, creating data frames. We also import Matplotlib uh, for visualization and plotting figures. Uh, note that here we are importing uh, pipeline and then polynomial features, uh, which is the pre-processing technique that we're gonna use. Grid search CV, which is for cross-validation and selecting best model. And also uh, we are importing rich regression, which is uh, similar to linear regression, except that now we have a regularization parameter that I'm gonna show you right now. And then also I want to increase the font size for my figures. So that's why I'm gonna use this update font size for these figures that we have. So now that we run this, we can go to the next slide um, and we can see that, for example, for um, polynomial features, we have an important parameter, which is this degree. So by default, this degree of polynomial is two, but we may need a higher degree polynomial to get the best possible results. And the same thing happens with, um, for example, ridge regression here. If I look at ridge and look at the parameters that it accepts or the arguments, the first one and the most important one in some sense is alpha, which is the amount of regularization. And by default is one, but you may need a different value for your specific problem. So how can we find these two parameters or hyperparameters better to say? So that's what I'm gonna do in the next slide. So let's start by creating a synthetic uh, data set. Here I create a function, which I call this true function, meaning that this is the underlying function that I like to recover, which is cosine of 1.5 times pi times x. So for any x, this is the formula that we have here. And then I generate 100 samples uh, from 0 to 1 when the input is from 0 to 1 and I pass this to this function and I add some sort of like amount of noise here to find these input output pairs, right? So this is a regression problem. These are the inputs in X and outputs in Y. And I can plot this function so you can see it. Uh, and we observe that this is the function that looks like this sine or cosine function. And our goal is that using these X and Y values, these input output pairs, we want to use polynomial regression to uh, predict or recover the underlying function. In order to do that, the first step is to use polynomial features. So that's our transformer or preprocessing technique. And then we are gonna use rich regression. Obviously you can use other regression method that you want. For example, lasso or uh, re standard uh, linear regression model. But here we are using ridge and uh, regression. And the fact is that each of these have one high per parameter. So that's the one that I showed you before. Polynomial features, we have to set degree. For ridge, we have to set alpha. So it is relatively easy to define a pipeline. So you have two steps, first polynomial and then a regressor. And note that you have these two poles here, meaning that first we have to give a name to each transformer or estimator in your pipeline, right? So this is the text that you can see here. These are the names. But then the question is how we can tell grid search CV that which parameter is for which uh, transformer or estimator. And the idea is that you can do that using this double underscore. So use the name of the, for example, here, transformer, which is this poly, 
and then we put double underscores and then the name of the hyperparameter was degree. And now you give a list of values. So we want to choose between degree two, three, and four. And the same thing for the regressor model, right? So the regressor, which we call it here regress, has a name which is alpha. And we are using this log space here, which gives us five uh, values from 10 to the negative two to 10 to the power of two. For, so from 0.01 to 100. And that's because I'm using log space instead of linear space. And after that is very easy. You just call grid search CV. You provide the model that you have, which is this pipeline. And now this set of parameters that you want to choose the best from number of folds or groups that you want and one way to choose the best model. So here you can use any evaluation metric you want to use. I use explain variance. And the reason is that explains, explain variance is always less than or equal to one. One means it's a perfect model. And obviously higher values uh, indicate a better uh, model. And after you define this, the only thing you need to do is to use the name, which I call this here search dot fit. And then I pass my data. The only reason I'm using this reshape negative one and one here is because the way that cycle learn is designed for inputs, we are looking for two dimensional arrays and the, the way I defined it in the previous slide, X was a one dimensional array. So I'm using this technique to make sure that I have the same exact array, but now instead of 1D, it's 2D. If you don't do that, you will receive an error message. And now the nice thing is that uh, after you do this feeding for this grid search CV, now you can see all the results of this cross, cross validation and I'm creating a data frame. That's why I imported that data frame. So if I go now to the next slide and I print this, you can see that now I have this data frame, which I have these different uh, configurations of hyperparameters, for example, degree two, uh, and then these different hyperparameter values that I mentioned for uh, alpha from 0.01. 200 and then degree three. Um, and I, I cannot show you the entire list, but if you do this on your own uh, machine, then you can look at the entire um, set of uh, configurations and the corresponding results that we have. But one thing that is very important here we want to show you uh, is that in fact, you can use uh, the sort of like um, attribute best underscore params underscore. And in this way, you find out that the best combination of hyperparameter values uh, is given by degree four and the value of the alpha, which is the strength of regularization is 0.1. So let's go to the next slide and see how this works. So again, now I call this final model because the one that's the one that I selected, the best model, I set the degree equals to four. Uh, alpha to point, um, zero 0.01. Let me make sure that I did this correctly. Yes, I did. It's point zero 0.01. Uh, and then I do again feeding. Um, now, because I want to plot this function, I'm going to divide 0 to 1 to any number of values that you want to 200 equally space points. Um, and then I'm going to uh, plot uh, my prediction uh, model, which is basically here we are using uh, the name of the model uh, dot predict. And if we do this here, you can see that now we have the true function and this is the best model that we found given the hyperparameter values that we have. So what happens if I choose degree two instead of four? We can see right now. You can see that, um, you know, this obviously does not uh, very well capture the patterns that we have in original data. Whereas when I chose four, you can see that you know it does a much better job and you know if you remember we got alpha the optimal value is 0 0.01 but what happens if i let's say increase this to 100 because i'm using more regularization most likely this wouldn't be a good fit and you can see that this almost is a flat function so therefore i spur to use this 0 0.01 and this gives us a really good result so you can extend what we learned here to more advanced cases, but this shows you exactly how you can um, tell scikit-learn which parameters from which transformers or estimators you want to optimize over. I hope you found this video useful and see you next time.